ask just about anyone to name a few of their childhood foods they remember the most fondly. And macaroni and cheese or KD will likely come up. Cheesy, filling, easy and fun to prepare, it's one of those foods that almost everybody likes. In fact, Canadians eat more mac and cheese than any other country in the world, and it's considered by some to be Canada's national dish. Today, we're going to take this basic comfort food and elevate it to new levels. Gourmet mac and cheese three ways. I'm Garrett Shack, and today, that's what we're cooking on the coast. Pasta and cheese recipes were recorded in medieval cookbooks as early as the 14th century and brought to Canada by the British. We've got three great gourmet mac and cheese dishes for you today. We're going to start with a uh, three cheese, like super gourmet cheeses. We've got some really great Parmesan Reggiano, some creamy, creamy Havarti, and a really aged white cheddar that's going into our first one. Then we've got a vegetarian dish with feta, sun-dried tomatoes, and olives. And last but not least, for those meatitarians out there, we're going with chorizo and a delicious goat's cheese. It's going to be incredible. The first thing we need to do though is get started with our roux. This is going to be the base to our mother sauce which is called a bechamel. We want equal parts of butter and flour into a pan here. I've preheated a little bit so we'll have to work quickly. So once again, whenever you're making a roux, the most important thing is just to have equal amounts of butter and flour. Now this mother sauce is known as a bechamel. It's one of five in classic French cuisine. And basically all it is is like a milky cream sauce basically that uh, will act as the as the sort of you know gooey sticky bit that's going to keep all the good ingredients stuck to our noodles here. Now now once our butter is melted we can start adding our flour and we'll build this roux. Okay I like to just hold back a little bit just to see how it's looking. Give it a good stir around make sure the butter adheres to all that flour. We're gonna add a little bit more. I can see that it needs, it needs a little bit more flour because I can still see a little bit of the fat coming out of the pan there. Perfect. We want all of it to kind of cook just a touch as we go. There we go. Okay, at this stage, I'm gonna scrape off my little ladle here again. And we'll start adding our milk. In it goes. Add a little bit, now let's we'll add a little bit more, then I'll give it a whisk. We, we don't want any lumps in our mac and cheese, that's for sure. So obviously everybody out there knows the household name Kraft is, uh, is responsible for mac and cheese, I suppose, as we know it today. And they sell over a million boxes every single day. Pretty unbelievable when you think about it. I mean, it is delicious, don't get me wrong. More milk, we're just gonna add the rest of this milk. So kind of a rule of thumb is you want about sort of 60 milliliters of, uh, of roux. So 60 milliliters of flour, sorry, 60 milliliters of flour, 60 milliliters of butter to thicken about one liter of liquid. And that'll thicken it to about a medium consistency. So there's a rule of thumb at home if you ever need to use a roux to thicken anything. I'm gonna turn the heat up a little bit. I'll add the last of this milk and a couple other special ingredients. So traditionally, the onion would go in there. Now in French cuisine, when you're making the Bechanel, you'd be, you'd be getting all fancy and sticking cloves and stuff in there, but we just really want that onion to flavor our, uh, our sauce here a little bit. So I'm just gonna put them in in big chunks like that and just let them uh, kind of impart their, their oniony goodness to the, uh, to the dish. We want bay leaves in there. If you have fresh bay leaves at home, use them. I can't say that enough. So a couple of delicious bay leaves. It adds this sort of floral type note to your dish, which is great and it's really quite subtle. This is looking great. We've got all the lumps out of there, so that's perfect. I'm gonna tuck that whisk away. And then we can just continue to stir with our little sort of spatula here. And now I just wanna season it ever so slightly. Actually, I'm gonna grab another spoon here. We'll just season it ever so slightly after we taste it with some Tabasco, a couple of dabs, there we go, a couple more. A little Worcestershire sauce, a few splashes, some salt, some pepper, there we are. Perfect, and the last thing I wanna do here before we get started on our very first one, which is that gourmet, super duper uh, uh, cheesy one with all the different types of cheeses, 
is just give it a squeeze of lemon juice. Gives it that acidity that it's going to need to cut through sort of the fattiness of all that cheese and so on. And a nice stir. Looks great. Okay, now I've got some pre-cooked macaroni here. I have a whack of cheese here. We talked about that Parmesan Reggiano. In it goes, just a really like well-aged Parmesan cheese. Gives it a nice saltiness. I've got grated up some Havarti, the creamy Havarti. That's gonna give it that like stringy, really awesome kind of look and texture and taste. And we've also got that high alpine kind of uh, stinky raclette cheese in there. There we go. And then I'm going to pour over some of this hot sauce here. Now this sauce that I've made is going to last us for three different recipes. So I'm not gonna pour it all in there, but I'm definitely gonna get a good glug of it in there. I'll just scoop it in. This one here, we're actually gonna fire into a, uh, an oven-proof dish, and then we're gonna give it a bake and let it bake in the oven for the duration of our show, actually. Yeah, looks good. Cheesy goodness. Before we pour it in, I wanna mix in some chives. So this is going to enhance not only the cheese flavor in this dish, but also because we've added onions there, you'll get a little bit of that flavor too. So give our onions a good chop. Some chives here, adds a little bit of color too, gives it that flair. Here we go. Right, old KD, old KD never had uh, fancy cheeses like that in their, uh, in their mix. There we go, we got all those gourmet cheeses in here, it's going to be fabulous. Now let's pour this right into our casserole dish here. Does not look delicious. Oh, that is macaroni and cheese at its best right there. Now we're gonna make a quick little batch of Parmesan breadcrumbs here. Parmesan in there. Just mix that around a little tiny bit. Then we're gonna sprinkle the breadcrumbs right over top of our mac and cheese. Does not look good. And why not, since we got a little bit more cheese here, let's make this ooey and gooey. Dump all that on there too. Perfect, now we're gonna pop this guy into the oven. 350 degrees, probably gonna take about you know, 20 minutes to get that nice and uh, nice and golden brown and get it all heated up through, okay? So let's fire it in there. Excellent, right on the middle rack. We'll be back later in the show to finish our mac and cheese. After the break, we're hitting the road to do a little exploring. You'll wanna stick around for that. Gorgeous location at Arbutus RV up in Mill Bay. Jim, how are you? Excellent, Garrett. Welcome to Arbutus RV in Mill Bay. <laughs> Thanks so much for having me. Uh, you know, I, I get giddy when I get into a place like this because it's so much fun just to walk around and check out all these amazing RVs. And it's just, there's I, they're like mobile homes, you know what I mean? Like you can just pack up everything and go. And Yeah, well, and that's the nice thing about RVs is with people coming in, the customers coming in, whether they're looking or they're looking to purchase, is uh, they're in the same, same lifestyle, same yeah. mode, uh, excitement. We're going camping. Let's find out what we can use and what we can That's right. go and it's enjoy awesome, the great outdoors, especially here on Vancouver Island. There's yeah. so much pla many places to go. And when you're, you know, when you're camping in luxury, you got to be eating in luxury, right? So, Absolutely. Uh, so on today's menu, so we we're gonna make sure that Garrett comes with the RV. <laughs> yeah, that's it. That could be a bonus feature <laughs> yeah. for these things. Hey, this could be lucrative for both of us. Um, so today's menu has cedar plank trout. So we've got some lake trout here, uh, fresh. I've taken the head off and we've deboned it and all that stuff. You can ask the fishmonger to do that for you. They're happy to do it. Uh, so the first thing we need to do is we got a couple of cedar planks that we've soaked overnight. So they've uh, so they won't just you know turn into ashes on you right away. Um, and you want to get that started okay. because the reason being is that we're using trout and it's a fairly thin fish, right? So we want to have that already sort of at this point where it's smoking, as you can see now. Yeah, I've seen salmon then. So yeah, that's right. But thinner, salmon's thinner. just Shake? Yeah, it's just so much thicker, right? So right. Uh, these are just untreated uh, cedar shakes, you know, like for putting on your roof. So okay. if, you're, if you're missing a few, it wasn't make, sure, me. make sure they're untreated. <laughs> Definitely untreated, absolutely. <laughs> All right, a little salt. We want to season the inside of this guy. A little salt. There we go, some fresh cracked pepper. I'm just going to give it a little squeeze of some lemon here. Uh, lemon and fish go together. Yeah, that they do, hey? Just a little squeeze inside. Close it up. Definitely going to put some salt on the outside too. 
And then we're gonna lay this right down on our cedar plank. And you can see it's all already smoking nicely there. Beauty. And now we wanna close the lid. That catches all the smoke and the cedar yeah, smoke. Yeah, so you know that smell of the sauna? That's gonna yeah. be all trapped in there. You're gonna kinda of smoke your uh, trout as you're cooking it as well. So that's, uh, we can leave that for a few moments. The other thing that I wanna do is actually put a piece of lemon on there. I love grilled lemon. Have you oh, ever tried yeah, it? Yeah, it is, yeah. Awesome. So you just kind of cut a little chunk off the end here. Fire that in a nice hot, hot part of the grill. Um, the other thing that I wanted to mention here too is start on that high heat, but okay. then adjust your adjust your planks. So you can move them over to a lower heat, yeah. but keep the other side blasting. Because you want nice big heat, kind of it'll start kind of rolling in there, oh, okay. kind of making a convection action in there. So right? not, under the sh not under the shingle, but on the... That's right, yeah. So still heat. keep the heat on, but uh, the higher heat away from the shingle. Okay. Uh, okay. Companyman, we can't just eat trout, right? I mean, oh, well, you and I could, but uh, we're probably camping with our lady friends or whatever yeah, it is. Want so, something else. Yeah, they're gonna want some, something healthy and force us to eat that stuff. So, uh, so we got some green bean salad here. We've got uh, just some blanched green beans. Uh, so just lightly cooked, they still have a little bit of crunch to them. Mm -hmm. um, some shallots. We got some beautiful heirloom uh, cherry tomatoes there. So why don't you go ahead and dump those in there? Perfect. Like, awesome colors and flavors. They're so sweet. Nice big glug of the old uh, extra virgin olive oil there. You want to do the honors with some salt? Sprinkle some right. salt in there. I'm using, uh, this is one of my favorite vinegars to work with. It's called, it's a sherry vinegar. And basically it's vinegar that's been aged in a sherry cask. And it just has this really amazing flavor to it. It's almost wine, like, almost like a wine vinegar. Yeah, it smells like wine. That's what it does, doesn't it? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. But it's lovely. It goes super well with green beans, so it's awesome. Some fresh cracked pepper. Now I'll just get you to mix that sort of all together. I, I like to put a fair bit of pepper in this because tomatoes and pepper go really well together. Okay. So just give it a good mix and then you can just sort of spoon it uh, onto one side. Let's go to this side of the plate right here if you don't mind. Okay. And I'll have a look at our uh, at our cedar plank trout here. All right. A gorgeous piece of grilled lemon that I'm gonna just put on the side there. And then I'm gonna come right over to the plate where you are. So look at that, see the, you got the char on that, uh, on that lemon. Now what I would do is, once it cools down a little bit, you know, you just kind of give it a good squeeze. Very nice. Right over top. And then we just grab a, grab a piece here. We can just bend it back. Peels right off. Peels right off. Go ahead and have that piece oh, there. Oh, wow. thank you. You're very welcome. Still nice and nice, moist. Nice to cook. Okay. Oh yeah, it's gorgeous, eh? Oh yeah. Now this is camp eating, right? You're just oh, your yeah. fingers getting ready to drop. The nice thing about trout is not quite as strong as salmon, mm -hmm. so it's a nice light fish. Mild flavor. Yeah, very, very good. Oh. Awesome with all the... How tender is that? Mm -hmm. So juicy, Beautiful. eh? Thanks again for having Beautiful. me here, Jim. I love it. When we're, all done, when we're all done filming here, I'm going to go probably have a nap in one of these bad boys. <laughs> <laughs> uh, waste the afternoon. We'll enjoy it. We'll have to hook one up when the air conditioning's on. Yeah, absolutely. Which one do warm. I get to take home with me anyway? That's well, like... <laughs> we'll talk about that later. That might be <laughs> part of the contract. Perfect. <laughs> we'll be right back in a few minutes. Jim and I are going to go shopping for RVs. <laughs> All right, we're back in the kitchen to finish up our gourmet mac and cheeses. The first of our three mac, mac and cheese is in the oven, baking away. Now let's get rolling on our, our meaty one, which is the chorizo with peppers and green onions and delicious goat's cheese. And the third one, which is our sort of Greek style with feta, olives, and sun-dried tomatoes. I want to get some, uh, some chorizo into a pan here. Just put a little bit of oil in there, just to get it started. We don't need a lot. And then for garnish, I've got this other half of chorizo. Now, if you can, try and find a local, uh, local producer to make the chorizo. I mean, the Portuguese and the Spanish may, uh, may have coined the market on inventing it, but we make some great products a little bit closer to home. So try and find it in the local butcher shop if you can. Okay. So let's build, uh, let's build our Greek style one. So we've got in here, we've got just some elbow macaroni again. We're doing all three with elbow macaroni today. I've got a huge chunk of, uh, of feta cheese, so I'll crumble some of that up. It's mac and cheese after all, right? Not mac and sun-dried tomatoes, so let's fire it in there. <laughs> Interesting fact came out of all this. The quickest, unofficially, that someone has ever downed a uh, box of mac and cheese. It's 33.8 seconds once it's been cooked and dressed and so on. Can you imagine eating mac and cheese that quickly? Unbelievable. In go the olives. In goes the sun-dried tomatoes. Tomato, tomato. 
I like to mix it up now and again. And then we have some fresh oregano here. We'll fire that in there. Grab a spoon, give this a little stir. And now we want to add that base to it again. So I'll just grab my pan, scooch our onions out of the way a little bit, and put a couple tablespoons, nice big tablespoons of our, uh, of our sauce in there. It's all right if you get a piece of the onion, that's not a big deal. It'll just taste delicious. Give this a little shake. I want to make sure my chorizo gets nicely cooked on that one side. Stir it around. And then we're going to put this one, different serving vessels, use your favorite one. So I'm going to add this one right here to our mason jar here because it's cool and hip. So in that can go. Squeeze it down. There we go. And then we'll just crumble a little bit more feta on top. Again, it is, it is all about the cheese here. There we go. Check on our chorizo. Coming along nicely, I'm gonna flip that guy over. At this point, I'll add a few peppers, but we're really, really just gonna take the chill off those peppers. We're not doing too much else to them. And then into our bowl here we'll go. We have some goat's cheese. Why not? We're playing around with cheeses here, so we've got some lovely goat's cheese. It's creamy, adds a nice tanginess. I got a little bit of grainy mustard, just because mustard and chorizo goes really well together. And I've got some lovely green onion here. Okay, in it can go. There we are, and now we'll just scoop these. We're gonna save this big guy off to the side here. And we'll just dump all this in there. Now, we wanna get that chorizo. The chorizo has released a little bit of its oils, and we definitely wanna get that in there too. Mix it around really, really well. All that goat's cheese, combining it, combining the grainy mustard, a few cracks of black pepper. There we are. And then our sauce again. Here we go. We're almost ready to get all these guys into the oven. Okay, give it one last stir. And then here I'm using an oven-proof uh, oven coffee mug, basically. But that should, uh, should do nicely for this dish. Look at that. Look, you can see how stringy and gooey it is already. So, plunk those right in there like that. Looks fantastic, smells amazing. All those wonderful colors. The red from the peppers, the green from the onions. A little bit of that deep color from the chorizo. Oh, wow, love it. And then we're gonna fire these guys right into the oven here. Now the trick here is we wanna put it on a broil. So we're gonna turn up our top portion of the oven. Oh, just barely slides in there. And then crank her onto broil just to finish up. All right, and through the magic of television, our first casserole, the ooey gooey, super cheesy mac and cheese is ready to go. Let's go to the oven and check out the ones we've had on broil. Oh, look at that. Beautiful color on top. Nice and hot, that cheese is starting to caramelize. That looks spectacular. Love it. Ooh, look at that. So here's our coffee cup one. Put that down right there. Now remember, that was the chorizo uh, and goat's cheese one, so I'm just gonna garnish that with a nice big chunk of chorizo right in the center. Doesn't that look fantastic? Then we've got our vegetarian or Greek one with the feta cheese, the olives, and all that sun-dried tomato. Again, because we're going gourmet here, we gotta make it look pretty. We'll put a little, uh, little bit of that fresh oregano in there. There we go. Tuck that out of the way, and then let's dig into our casserole here. I've got my serving spoon. We'll just find a nice spot, dig right in. Oh yeah. Look at that, a string of cheese hanging down, steaming hot. I love it, the crispiness from the cheese on top. Perfect. Perfect. Now I'd probably serve this one with just a little lemon wedge and only because with all that richness in there, you want a little bit of that lemon just to, just to sort of cut it all. And there you have it. A few takes on a national favorite, our gourmet mac and cheese three ways. Now where do I begin? <laughs> Now what better way to enjoy these delicious gourmet mac and cheeses than with the perfect beverage pairing? Today with me is Doug White from Four Mile Brewing Company. How you doing, Doug? I'm doing well. How are hey, you? Hey, I'm great. I'm great. Good. I'm super excited to try some beer with these awesome gourmet mac and cheeses. Okay, well, um, I brought two beers that I thought would pair very nicely. Uh, okay. The first one is the brown ale, and it's somewhat counterintuitive. It just so happens mm. that the nice 
malts um, from the brown ale um, complement the cheesy sauce in the uh, in the yeah, mac and cheese. Yeah, that makes sense. So you got that richness of the malt that's going to work really yeah. well with all the cheese and ooey gooeyness of these uh, these dishes. That sounds and great. So well, why don't we give it a try and then we can sure. see which one sort of uh, all right. works best, hey? Sounds that good one. to me. Yeah, I look forward to seeing this one. Now you have some really impressive artwork on your labels, and uh, I know Four Mile Brewing Company has been around for a long time, and with that comes a lot of history, doesn't it? I mean, oh, and, it's, and a lot of your labels reflect that, don't they? Uh, yes, they do. Um, uh, for example, uh, this is uh, known as a brothel brown, I might add. All and, right, uh, yeah. There was a period where, before my time, um, <laughs> where Four Mile uh, was a, a brothel, and uh, it was uh, well known on the coast, apparently. Uh, I'm going to so. try this one with the chorizo because I think that. That'll work really, really well. Mm. There's a little bit of goat's cheese in there. Might off-cut uh, the, the maltiness. Okay, well, I think I'm going to try this one just because it looks gorgeous. Mm -hmm. Nice and crispy as well. Mmm. 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 That is good. Oh, yeah. Yeah, you're absolutely right. The maltiness really cuts through it and makes it taste delicious. Yeah, yeah there's, there's a, a nice slight, grain. slight sweetness. Now I gotta drink this one back so we can try the next one. Is that the, is that the way this works? All right, like you're allowed on, you're allowed on the show anytime. <laughs> yeah, you can invite me back. <laughs> <laughs> so what's the next one that you wanted to uh, that you wanted to try? Well, the um, this is put um, one away for later. What we call the best British. It's a classic English pale ale. Nice. Yeah. Look at that. Oh yeah, it's a very beauty. nice color. It's yeah. a beauty. Yeah. See, I'm a big fan of the bitters. I don't know. I, mean, I think beer drinkers know beer. They don't. They know that a bitter doesn't mean that it tastes bitter, but. Oh, it smells fantastic. Yeah. You can it, really it smell is, the hops. Yeah, That's we, fantastic. We uh, dry hop it. So after mm. it's fermented uh, in the open ferment, uh, fermenters, we then throw in some hops for a couple Very of nice. days. Very nice. I think so, this one yeah. with the uh, the feta cheese will go really nicely. The saltiness will sort of work really well there. Mm. Mm. Yeah, I think I'll try that as well. It's easy to eat, too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's always easy to eat. <laughs> yeah, no kidding, right? Easy yeah. to drink, easy to eat. Mm. Mm. Well, did you do this? <laughs> yeah, made it all by myself. <laughs> Thanks very much, Doug. Thank you so much for being here. I appreciate it, and you'll be seeing me at the Four Mile in no time, okay. I promise. <laughs> Thanks very much. Check out our website where you'll find more information on today's show and maybe a few surprises. I'm Garrett Shack. Thanks for watching, and don't forget to savor the flavor. Damn.